Rising from the plain of Thessaly in mainland Greece, Meteora is a captivating group of vertical rocks, rising up to 300 meters high, which time has twisted and on in beautiful patterns. And perched above these cliffs are the monasteries of Meteora, created from 1,356 onwards, which appear to hang in the air above the rocks, and are among of the most fairy tale, wonderful spots to visit in all of Greece. One of the greatest ways to view these sacred monuments, which have been named the Unies Seal, World Heritage Site, is on foot, hiking between them. Just remember, while this experience may be one of the top things to do in Greece for tourists, for the months, these constructions are places of quiet, prayer, and meditation, and respect is vital. Plan your experience seeing these unique attractions with our list of the things to do at the Meteor Monasteries. Before starting, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more future updates. So let's start. Visit the six active monasteries. Let's start with the obvious. One of the top things to do in Meteor is to see the stunning monasteries located atop granite boulders with seemingly no simple access to the summit. And if they look difficult to reach, it's because they were supposed to be that. These monasteries were created by monks yearning for isolation and building atop a rock that required ropes, ladders, and a whole lot of upper body strength to reach certainly dwindles down the amount of people who are you going to pay you a visit. Today, staircases and bridges make it easy for people to drop by. But there was a time when you had to earn your admittance. Great Meteoron Monastery is the largest and oldest out of the six current monasteries. This monastery dates back to the 14th century and it was created by St. Athanasios and it's an important one because it symbolizes the beginning of organized monasticism in Meteora. Varwa Monastery is the second largest of the monasteries and it was founded during the mid-14th century. This one sits straight across from the Great Meteoron. Holy Trinity Monastery is possibly the hardest to reach and bond aficionados may know it from the film for your eyes only. The Rausanu Monastery dates to the late 16th century. It is one of the two active monasteries to be occupied by nuns. The Monastery of St. Nicholas of Anapapsis was founded around the end of the 14th century. Because there was limited rock surface to work with, this monastery was erected vertically with a number of stories each layered on top of the other. The Monastery of St. Stephen is a popular one because it's the easiest one to approach thanks to a bridge. Like Rausanu, it is also populated by nuns, hiked to ruined and abandoned monasteries. The operating monasteries may draw all the visitors, but did you know that there are countless ruined and abandoned monasteries dispersed around the area? The only problem is, if you want to meet face-to-face -face with these, you're going to have to leave the bus and the vehicle behind and actually use your own two feet. You might be able to reach the active monasteries on wheels for a quick visit or snapshot, but there are other spots that are only accessible via dirt pathways and a little scrambling. One of the highlights visiting Meteora was going on a guided hike through Meteora's rock forest. The first thing that impressed you about the area were the towering rock formations, which geologists think were produced by intense weathering and the waters of a prehistoric sea. Visit ancient monk prisons in Agionumia and Hermit Caves. If you think monasteries are abundant in this part of Greece, Wait till you come upon the hundreds of caves poking from the rock walls. Meteora was home to a thriving, ascetic society in the 12th century. But monks lived atop the sandstone pillars as early as the 9th century, finding their home in the small creeks and caves of the rock formation. Among the many architectural creations they left behind were monk prisons hollowed out tunnels erected on several levels on the pillar. There are caves where people kept their goats and lambs at night caves where hermit monks went to spend their days in utter seclusion, and caves where naughty monks were jailed for causing problems and breaking commands. Each cave you see in Meteora bears a unique narrative. Also, it's astonishing to imagine that reclusive monks would have had to lift themselves up using ropes and ladders, not to mention that the first time they made it up, they would have had to freestyle it and risk their lives. Explore Kalambaka and Kastraki. Kalambaka and Kastraki are the two settlements nestled in the foothills of the Meteor Mountains, and they are both absolutely worth a visit. The town of Kalambaka, sometimes spelled Kalampako or Kalabaka, was much larger. The reality is that Kalambaka is a town 
with 12,000 inhabitants and lots of restaurants, pubs, bakeries, travel agencies, gift stores, and other small enterprises. Some of the finest things to do in Kalambaka is to simply wander down its main street Trikelan, enjoy the local cuisine scene, or sit down with a cocktail and people watch. On weekend nights, the street is alive with both locals and tourists. You can also visit Kalambaka's Mushroom Museum if that's your thing. Just 1.5 acre or one mile from Kalambaka is the Kestraki settlement. It's a lot smaller and quieter place with more of a countryside vibe, but yet boasts a couple of nice restaurants and guest cottages. Take the via cordated to the Great Saint, just around the corner of Kastraki. Just a few blocks away from the Great Saint Tower area is a trail that takes you to the highest point in Mediora, only the Via Cordata, which requires both vertical and horizontal climbing secured by a rope around your waist, leads to the route. This particular technique is how you can ascend on top of the tallest rock for panoramic views of Mediora and Kalampaka, about 400 meters above the earth. Your guide will bring tea and snacks to enjoy with the view followed by a picnic meal to relish after the climb. Dust off your boots for a spot of horse riding. Near the country roads of Kalambaka, in the little hamlet of Castania, Kalo is an equestrian center sprinkled with camp stays some nestled in the middle of forestland, all dressed out in classic ranch-style decor. Outdoor activities dominate the agenda, including mountaineering, hiking, mountain biking, and most popular, horse riding expeditions throughout the valley. There are a dozen horses on site. Children and young adults are often escorted by a trainer on our long rides from the camp, while experienced riders can hop on adjoining routes by themselves for exploration. The distinctive draw of this excursion is the beautiful countryside affording uncompromising views of meteorous cliffs and monasteries. Eat classic mushroom base fare at Naramillos. Talking of mushrooms, you can experience an all-you-can-eat mushroom-themed meal at Naramillos in Diva for a traditional feast to remember. The restaurant, which also boasts some spectacular views of Meteora, gets very crowded around late spring and throughout the summer season, so it is essential to reserve well in advance. Some hiking excursions also provide a supper reservation there as a part of their package. The most popular option is the six-course sampler mushroom feast, wild mushroom starters, and cream soup. It also serves, some believe the best, authentic Greek salad in Central Greece. Natural History Museum Meteora and Mushroom Museum Natural History Museum Meteora and Mushroom Museum is located in the city of Kalambaka, quite near to Meteora. The first one is about animals and has roughly 350 species of mammals and birds, while the second one is about mushrooms and contains approximately 250 kinds of mushrooms. The collection of animals consists of excellent quality embalmed birds and mammals, manufactured by Europe's greatest taxidermist, while some of them are exceedingly uncommon. The mushroom collection consists of handmade mushroom sculptures, keeping the homogeneity of colors, shapes, and size. They are exhibited in three phases of development, so that the visitor develops a complete picture of mushrooms' life circle. The sculptures were sculpted one by one by high-skilled sculptors in the larger local region. However, it is not just the quality of the exhibits that makes our museum excellent, but also the style of presentation, which is highly distinctive for Greek standards, and it can be compared with other similar European museums. This is why visiting our museum can be a unique experience. What do you think of our video? Which place do you like most? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more future updates. Thanks for watching.